Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blog. Well, we've been killing ourselves laughing <laughs> for a while now, so I, it's going to be an interesting day. Uh, we're talking about texture today, so to get really serious here. And texture, uh, you know, in painting, of course, uh, is sort of a representation of, um, you know, a tactile thing. So when we have a surface and we run our fingers over it and we get the feeling of, you know, bumps and, and so forth, that's what we're talking about. Well, in painting, we try to emulate that. And it's been happening for a long time. People have invented all sorts of lines and uh, squiggles to indicate texture uh, in compositions. Now, I just want to give your attention here to an old um, uh, woodcut. You know, long before they had uh, the printing press, well, even after they had the printing press, they still didn't have photography. So what uh, they did was they did a lot of texture and that was and one way maybe to indicate shadows and, you know, all line work. So if you uh, see some of the lines in here, we'll uh, get uh, Josh to give it a little bit more of a close up. Um, and you can see hatching, which is just straight lines. And uh, then there's some cross hatching and some little squiggles here in the trees. Some rounded curvy lines. Some dots, dashes. You get the idea. That's what texture is all about. So now I have discovered um, Play-Doh. And uh, there, there's a few, uh, you know, videos out there uh, in YouTube land. <laughs> and uh, so we thought we'd give it a try as well. And uh, it's really interesting because you can make some nice stamps out of the Play-Doh and then that will transfer to your plate and you will have a nice impression on the plate. It's not perfect, uh, you know, it has its moments. One of the things is if you have a raised surface, for example, something like this, then uh, the ink it, it will pick up on the raised surface. So anything that's a little higher than the surface will pick up. So you're going to have some of the background, you're gonna have, these are all little stars and some of the little dots. So they will catch the ink. You won't have a perfect representation, but it's nice. So one thing about Play-Doh is that you don't get these tools dirty, and that is a big help. We also have texture plates. Here it's a little different because uh, it's incised. So that means I have carved areas out and uh, I started this, I think, with uh, just glue and then uh, impressed circles in it, and that gave us the indents. So this prints very well, so we will show that on the gel plate. Then we have other textures, things like this, that you can push into the gel plate, and hopefully it's circles like this. And then we'll try maybe some... Uh, some cloth like burlap, which has got a nice pattern, and see if that will uh, impress into the Play-Doh. And this, um, you know, stars and shapes like this will certainly do it. And we have a number of keys, and that should be fun. So I'm going to use my little um, four by six uh, gel plates. We'll put this aside. We'll start off with their little stars, I guess. And uh, I've just, uh, all you do is uh, you roll it out. I have one done already, so because it takes time. <laughs> I just, you know, roll it. And uh, I dedicate this to, you know, art making. I've had this for a long time. I don't use it for food anymore anyway. So now it's gotten into the studio and here it stays. <laughs> And it has a nice weight to it, so it's easy to um, get this thing in shape. Now I have made it as a 4x6 plate, as you can see. And we'll start with our star impressions. Oh, 
Okay, so we'll see how that works. And we might take a, a ghost print of that to show these stars will turn out dark. And it'll pick up some of the background. Now, before we start, because we want to talk about color, I have uh, a Canadian artist I want to share with you. Uh, he passed away in, in 1966, so he's been gone quite a long time. But his work uh, has a lot to do with texture, and the textures are incredible. He's working with oil paint and uh, a very limited palette in many cases. There's some sort of burgundies in here, if you can see that, some blues. So it's not entirely black and white. And, uh, but his, he worked quite large, uh, you know, I think this was like 169 centimeters. So, and uh, I don't know what the other outside dimension was, but anyway, so, and he basically sculpted um, these compositions. So texture is just rampant in his work. I uh, have a couple of us. Here's another one. So he has some smooth areas. You can see the texture in here. And I don't know if he used uh, trowels and things like that to get, you know, those, that's what it looks like here is like a trowel. So he used a variety of tools, certainly not brushes in this case. Then he did some smooth work. Um, this is much smooth, although here it could still be, you know, in high relief, which means it's above the surface, which is what printmaking is all about. Okay, so we're going to use his colors today to uh, inspire our palette. And I just want to show you a couple of things that I did previously there on, uh, we had did a little short, was it a short Josh or the Instagram? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I think, think it was Insta, oh, both, yeah. So, so uh, and we'll do this as well, where you're actually carving into the Play-Doh. And this is the kind of effect you would get. All right, okay. Now we're finally at this process. Okay, we're going to um, ink our stars. We'll start with blue. We'll put this back in place here. Now, one thing about uh, the way you handle the paint is that you don't want a lot. Otherwise, you'd just be rearing it off anyway. And uh, let's just add a tiny bit of that. Maybe we'll get that nice burgundy that uh, Emile Bordeaux got and a little goes a long way okay and just a little too much of the red but that's okay you don't want it too uh, heavy in paint for one thing it's you know your play-doh will be um, to have too much paint on it and probably hard to get off, but that looks pretty good. So you just peel it up. This is about maybe an eighth of an inch thick. And you just push it down. Oh, we have some little things embedded already. <laughs> Okay, now, like I said, the stars should come out dark, and it looks like that's what we have. This is uh, just uh, copy tag paper, and I think we should be able to just get it on here, like so. Use my baron. And didn't pick up the background too much, so our paint on there is pretty good. You can play with this until you don't get much of the background in it. But um, okay, so nice stars. And let's see if we can get a ghost print out of that. We'll just use a little bit of white, I guess. 
Because I'm concerned about getting too much paint on the plate, I'm just taking it off of my little side uh, palette. So now I think by magic, <laughs> magic of the gel plate, our stars should be white. So just to recap, anything that's above the surface will pick up the paint. Anything below um, will be left. No. We might not get much of anything here. Okay. Well, some stars are white and some are stay dark. So, well, that's the way it works. But it's interesting, isn't it? All right. So now about cleaning your your plate. You can spray it with a little bit of water if you like, and then just damp it dry. If it hasn't dried on there already. If it's still wet, you could probably print it on another surface. So you get most of the paint off. But what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it over. Make sure you haven't embedded anything in there. And we will work on a pattern like this. Now, I'm just wondering, I think we're just going to leave that on there. Uh, it will make the pattern richer and we'll have a nicer print. Okay, so let's have a look at what this will do. So you just push it down. Now again, in this case, our little buttons, or whatever you want to call them, are going to show up dark. That's a really nice impression. Your Play-Doh has to be fairly thick for you to be able to push it down and also to get it off the surface so you can put it on the print. Or on the gel plate, I mean. Okay. Let's just do some more blue here. Now, Emil used um, fairly light blues in his composition, so at least in the ones we are looking at. So we'll stick with our theme. So be sure and check him out. He's a Canadian artist. And, uh, he was, um, his heyday was in the abstract impressionist era where they did a lot of um, large uh, pieces of color. Lots of black. Okay. Now white dries very quickly, so you have to work fast. Let's see if we can get a good impression here. All right. Okay, we didn't really pick much up underneath, but maybe the ghost print will be uh, more revealing. But, you know, this is great for backgrounds. All right, so we'll put some white on. It, once you print it, it's pretty well dry, so.
we were picking. This time we picked up some of the stuff from underneath and our little circles are, wait, that's good. And we're getting some really interesting effects. We could do a third one in here. Okay, let's do that. We'll just change in a little bit of the color. Tiny, tiny bit. Let's see what happens. In this case, we're just going to remove it off of there and plunk it down in the middle. So as a development, you can see it's picking up some of the grungy bits from underneath. Um, it's starting to create this um, wonderful um, variation. I mean, you could go with this uh, for a long time. You could keep adding stuff to here, but I think we're done with that for now. And we're just going to clean that off. This is my cutting mat. and. Uh, it's a self-healing um, mat that uh, you can cut on it and, you know, it doesn't hurt anything. Wonderful invention. Okay, so what you do now is just, um, it doesn't, the, the acrylic paint doesn't seem to hurt the Play-Doh, so you can use it for a long time and just... Um, Make it back into a ball. We'll roll it out quick. Um, like I said Josh will put a little interlude in and we will have another piece to work with in a minute. Okay, so I just um, created another little 4x6 plate, and this is my texture plate that I talked about, um, just circles into, um, I think it was a, like a, a medium that uh, dries hard. So, a few circles here. Okay. Now some of these are lower than others, so the ones that are raised will, you know, create more patterns. Right, okay, let's start with um, black. We want to have, you know, lots of contrast in this case. And we'll add just hints of uh, the red, just like Emile Bordeaux did. Handed on the paint sometimes, so you have to spray it off until it looks just right. Okay, so we place it on our plate. Push down. Now this should print really well. So that's quite beautiful. The plate works quite well. And what I'm going to do is let that dry. We're going to put another layer on it. And uh, 
We'll just do maybe some burnt sienna on the other side. Just ever so slight amount. And then uh, we'll give it some white so it's not too intense. And then we'll roll it out. And we'll see what the color contrast will do. Again, a light touch. Uh, this is really very close uh, to uh, I have to concentrate just a minute. <laughs> All right. This is really very close to a transfer in many ways. So let's print this side. They're both good, so not picking up too much of a main surface, except on this side. So, okay, let's put another color on top. Let's try for the blue on both sides. And a tiny bit of white. A circle to blend the two colors. Right. Okay, let's print that. Let me just because I've lined them up, I can now put them down. Set a little bit of loss there on the side. I was getting most of it. With some light spots. I mean, I could put some medium on there and it will pick it up, but um, that will take time. So that's the result. So we get sort of a really atmospheric kind of, I guess we should do it this way because this one was in this side and this one was on this side. So we just lose a little bit of the circles. But it's quite a nice print. Okay, so just turn this thing over. <laughs> and then uh, Let's try a combination on this one. Again, I'm just going to leave those prints they've printed. It's not likely to even um, reveal anything. So now here's where our rolling pin comes in handy to make that impression. And that's why this heavy one is so good. Nice impression, okay. And uh, our colors, let's go back to our red. This is um, primary red and it's a museum quality, a museum brand, I guess, but the quality is pretty good. It's uh, very highly pigmented. Just going to add a little bit of the white to this side. Just 
just to give it a little bit more this is a tint by the way when you add white to a color you get a tint right so we'll see if our very small pattern will show up There, oops, <laughs> no problem. And then we'll put it on there. And some of that underneath might just show up. You could squash it down pretty good. Right, okay, let's take this print. I'm pushing quite hard to make sure that the texture will print onto our cardstock. So not so much on this one. And we'll see, it's got a little dry, I think. Okay, let's do some white on there and then the it should pick up the print better. You could put a little bit of open medium with your paints so they don't dry quite so rapidly. You have a little bit more work time. particular white is very dry. I'm going to just add a little bit of medium. Okay, just a drop. That wasn't a drop. <laughs> we just capture that and put it somewhere else. This is the open acrylic medium, which I talked about earlier. Now we should be able to line this up going this way. Not really all that concerned about uh, registering. So it won't be too far off. And we may have to let this dry. We're getting a bit more. Okay, we'll just leave that for a bit and then we'll have a look at it later. We can switch to a bigger plate because the next thing we're going to do is actually make a stamp out of our Play-Doh. And we, as a stamp, you can stamp it uh, multiple times. We don't have to make um, a huge thing, so I'm just going to roll it a little bit. You can make it circular or square, whatever you want. You need a bit of depth to it. So we'll start with our little left. Uh, stars since it's that season. And just a little bit more on that one side. So you can push it in quite deep so all the surface will print and that won't. We could put that in the center to give it more texture. <laughs> all right. So, okay, let's go quite dark. 
What's this Prussian blue? A little bit of ultramarine. And a touch of black. Maybe even a touch of red. I mean, stars can be just about any color. You have red stars, you have yellow, orange, maybe even a blue, green. <laughs> Again, uh, keeping your surface fairly thin, which is why sometimes you have trouble with it drawing so fast. But I think we're good to go at the moment. Okay, so here it goes as a stamp. And possibly, oops, we lost an arm on the star, that's okay. And you can just keep printing as you go. Okay, so So that's quite nice to get the stars happening in white. So we'll put another little bit more color on here. Tiny bit. Of course at this point, um, you know, you can add any of the textures that you've worked with already if you're following along with me. which would be just lovely. <laughs> and I'll just work with white paper. We can do this. This is a sheet of deli paper. And see how well it picks it up. stars are a little broken but you really see the texture of uh, the inside of the stars so that's kind of nice. So on the ghost print, there's the fuzzle, I'm going to put a little bit more and I'm just going to add some of my medium here. We're going to have just the lightest layer of burnt sienna on top of all that blue. And we're just going to go back to our stamp. See what happens. So this is a bit large for our card format, but certainly you can cut it down or cut it in pieces uh, for collage material. Ooh. So stars are sort of 
nebulous, <laughs> revealing themselves here and there. <laughs> and again, lots of texture. I like it. Worked good. Right. Okay. So we'll just manipulate it a bit and then uh, roll it out to sort of a round format. You don't really need a rolling pin, I guess. Um, you can use any format that, you know, is circular and roll it over. So I have some keys. Um, in a previous episode, we talked a lot about the keys. So I have a few of them. And I have to look at which side um, is, gives the best impression. The little wings should be show up. See, and we're not mucking up the keys. We don't have to glue them to anything. To make them print. There's a little guy. Hearts are nice. And this one needs a bit of impression. Oops. <laughs> sure you have it the right way. Much better. All right. Let's just do more of the burnt sienna. With Some of these containers are really good. I actually like this container quite a bit. Jars uh, for printmaking, when you take the lid off, there's a lot of surface area. And even if you have, say, a piece of paper to protect the paint, doesn't take long before, you know, if you've got a thick layer to remove or for the paint to be ruined eventually. A lot of the printmaking inks uh, come in jars or cans. And considering how expensive the paint is now, that isn't uh, really all that useful. <laughs> Fun stuff. And this one should be nice uh, as a ghost print. We'll see. Famous last words. <laughs> oh yes, okay. Keys. And we're getting a little bit of grunge from the background, but that's all to the good. A little more interest. Okay. So we'll just put a hint of, uh, I need more white. Or maybe we'll use uh, our neutral. And uh, what's this one called anyway? Unbleached. Um, titanium, which is nice. And we want some of the keys to be white again. Or, well, I guess it'll turn out dark, but well, we'll see. But they should turn out that unbleached titanium color. So 
So Play-Doh works really good as a stamp. Okay, here we go. Now that's very interesting. Needs one more layer. Let's try a tiny bit of blue. And a little bit of medium. Because that under layer is really drying fast. And we could overprint on this one, but I think we'll just give it another space here. All right. Well, <laughs> it obscured everything, so you'd probably have to do it again in a dark color. Okay, we can do that. So continuing on with a dark layer here, because that blue one didn't do much of anything, which was surprising. Uh, again, I think that's a problem with too much paint. So like I said, it's more like a transfer in terms of um, the amount of paint you use. Thin layer. And printing quick. After our little impressions. And, um, since we can see the keys in this one, we'll do it on top of this one. It should look like this. <laughs> Not saying it will, but it should. Oh, and things are dropping off my light table as usual. <laughs> Josh is over there killing himself laughing. <laughs> you know, internally hemorrhaging. <laughs> oh, yes. See, you can rescue just about anything, and you really get the mood of the keys here. Hmm. And I'm tempted to see if anything will come of it for this side. Let's see if there's anything remaining. As long as there's a still bit of moisture on there, um, you will pick up something. Ah, picked up quite a bit. Nice. All right. So that's quite nice. You see all the keys, and then there's an overlap, which could be useful. All right. So much for that. Well, we're coming to the bitter end here. Um. Again, uh, I think we just stamp it off on our old sheet here. Get most of it off. Because <clears throat> I want to use the other side and that's, we don't want paint all over everything. Okay, so using the other side, now we come to the last part, and that's um, carving by hand. So think of it a little bit as if you were doing a lino cut. Same principles apply. Uh, what is raised will uh, print, and what is uh, below that uh, will not. 
So because it's close to that time of year, or holiday time, let's do some, um, maybe a tree. And just starting, you just carve into it. Make it quite large because it's a bigger format. Don't forget the stem. And then just add some interesting branches to it. So you could do little landscapes, actually, um, with this format. And maybe give some powder into the tree trunk. And you could have other trees in here um, with branches and no leaves. You could have little tiny evergreens. Give some texture to the, to the ground. Here's where you can cross hatch if you want. We'll see if that shows up. Just making sure all the lines are deep enough so that they will actually print. Okay, so let's give ourselves um, a bit of green-like color. And we'll use our Russian blue. Make it into a night scene, I guess. That kind of idea, sort of almost a green in here. Right, okay. Do the tree down here. Then we can just repeat the pattern. And then uh, we'll do some texture at the top. Let's try some uh, burlap up here. make whatever textures you want or you can run your little stars over it it's all fair game now our paint has dried a bit so we're going to release it with uh, just a little bit of paint I'm gonna put a little bit of medium on here and yeah. 
All right, having mucked up with my medium here. <laughs> we'll print this. And we'll see what comes of it. All right, so we have some trees on the bottom, a few stars on the top. And uh, look at how interesting this is. Now we do have a ghost print to do. And I think it's still wet enough to pull that. All right. And there's our trees. Not sure if the overlap works, but you can trim something off here. Um, lots of stars. Look at the texture up in here. This is great. A bit of a fuzzle here, but well, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> so just to recap, um, we um, can roll it, uh, you know, to about an eighth of an inch and incise it with patterns or play-doh. And uh, you can try all sorts of different materials that you can impress in there. Uh, just some of the things we used, like this, some burlap. Uh, when we start getting into uh, making a stamp, then you can do things like this, cut out the pieces and push it down. So, and we can use uh, rollers. You can use texture plates, which I think dropped off here somewhere. <laughs> anyway, you can use uh, interesting stuff like this. I didn't get to do this this time, but... And the nice part about it is it does keep your materials clean. So, which is better so if you don't want to have uh, stuff on your on, you know, things like keys and, and so forth, um, materials that you want to keep clean, but you want an impression of them. And to, you know, to reuse it, you just um, manipulate it back into a, a ball, roll it out, and it, you can probably use it for a fair amount of time until maybe there's too much ink in it. And it's reasonable, so you could buy a lot of it and have fun <laughs> Have fun with your children and grandchildren if you have any, and uh, and just um, it's very therapeutic, you know, <laughs> manipulating stuff. It's good for you. So if you want some uh, fun thing to do over the holidays, you know, get out your play doh. Uh, by the way, the play doh lids have got a little impression, and uh, you can push that into the play doh and print that as well. So all these are possible. And, uh, of course, if you're using paints, be sure and supervise the children. Don't let them, you know, acrylic paints or have chemicals in them that may be not so good for children. Certainly not to put in their mouth. So take care of yourselves and your families over this holiday time. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're getting very close to our thousand, which is wonderful. We will have a special um, video uh, when we reach that. And uh, don't forget to play and have a good time. Take care and bye for now.